Hey, this is Matthew, and speaking today about iron, iron infusions. I went today for an iron infusion to my hospital, and basically I met a few cronies as well, so I just want to have a quick chat about my iron infusion and the people I met. Basically I had an iron infusion, uh, as opposed to most people with Crohn's, they, you're first given like a syrup or something, but most people find with Crohn's, any, any sweeteners, any sugar, you really can't tolerate it, any artificial sugars uh, include sweeteners. Yes, they are uh, usually, a couple weeks ago actually, this off topic, I bought I bought some jam with some, con instead of having sugar or sweetener, it had concentrated juice as a sweetener and I had that and I, was, I really enjoyed the jam, I've never had it in years and it was a real pleasure and then the other day I got some jam, I couldn't find the jam with concentrated juice as the sugar substitute so I got some sweet, some jam of sweet and I thought okay well, well I thought it'd be alright but no so it just it just backs it up that no sweeters, no sugars, no artificial anything when it comes to sweetness because oh, I was in the I was in the toilet I, my, I was so bloated so basically what my point was you'll get people with iron deficiencies they get given syrup and basically I'd say stay away from it because anything sweet's bad and well most people I think with Crohn's won't tolerate it too well well at least I won't so uh, yeah so basically then what you're left with because if you don't have enough iron in your system you get stunted growth and especially if you're if you have Crohn's from a young kid this actually is irreversible to my uh, to my shock actually when I was a, a teenager the main thing on my mind was becoming as tall as my dad six foot something but it never happened but then I was reading and it said basically if you don't have so much iron the iron that you should have during during your growth phase during you, when you're a kid or whatever that that basically that you're not going to make that up in life so basically if you're a teenager you're growing up Try to get your iron as high as possible, because then it'll, because oh, you won't catch up with it. So if you don't, if you can't tolerate syrups, try it. And if you can't tolerate it, then try to get iron infusions. Because I was only given iron infusions when I went into the adult, into the adult department, which is when I was 18, which is which was <laughs> a bit late for me, unfortunately. But it kind of helps. It kind of tops you up every few weeks. Although recently I've been really trying to get increase increase the iron in my diet, just getting some nice. It costs a bit more getting iron into your diet. Well, for one, I, I drink eggs. I don't recommend it to everybody, but for your guy, it's not so bad, I guess. I drink maybe four eggs a day recently. I used to drink loads of eggs, and that used to really keep me good with the iron. So I'm getting back to how I used to be. So I'm drinking the eggs. I'm having loads of beef slices, nice ones, on my sandwich, on my toast, whatever. Stick. And also, with when you're taking, like, liver is also a nice, good one. The day after I had liver, I was feeling so low. I had liver. It, could, it got me up. The next few days, I was feeling, I was feeling a real big difference. But in any case, you're gonna have beef or you're gonna have eggs. What you, what do you drink after? You drink orange juice. Vitamin C mixed with iron increase, increases how much iron is absorbed, so remember that. So I'm trying to increase iron through that, but then also you, you get topped up with the iron infusions. Basically it's just a drip through your vein, 15 minutes or what have you. I had the reaction on like one type of iron, they put me in a different iron and it's fairly alright. I get a rash or something, but they give me some they give me some antihistamine, they used to give me some steroids but you can feel your bones really do click after so I asked for something weaker so just an antihistamine and basically yeah I feel pretty good now actually pretty content to be honest compared to of late uh, so but basically I met some people when I went there and there was three of us in total so it was quite nice the, I was really shocked actually this one guy he's some Asian descent uh, also it's quite surprising usually it's European so of Crohn's basically this guy was on seven years on infliximab and this guy looked like he had a bodybuilder frame size maybe not this not cut but god he had he had the he had the frame 
I mean, I was losing hope of that. I lost hope of that kind of physique ages ago. But it was nice to see there's there's kind of hope at the end of the tunnel, you know. If you take your medication, uh, he took it for seven years, and the guy, his life is good for him, you know. He doesn't have to complain. I talked to him. He's, his psychological mindset was really good. He said he he tries to think whenever there's a problem. He doesn't break. He doesn't blame his Crohn's. And this guy has got a good body. And this guy, you, you really couldn't tell he had Crohn's apart from the fact because he got it when he was about three years old. He said apart from the fact that he's actually really pretty short, very short. But I mean, this guy is like a, a tank in width. So. Cronies, yeah, if you get everything under control, I mean, there's no reason why you can't you can't be as wide as this guy, you know. He also looks after his diet somewhat and doesn't have any anything completely stupid like alcohol. He says he just doesn't drink out of choice, intelligent one. Something I had to learn on my own back. Uh, basically, yeah, he's doesn't have spicy stuff, just keeps it clean, low residue food, chicken and rice bit of modulin just to keep it up, like 750 mils he said, and he's, this guy is, honestly, if I, you know, I should have took his contact or something, but it was nice to see that, you know, not everyone's suffering all the time, so it kind of gives me a bit of inspiration to keep on your medication, because the problem is, and I'm trying to say a lot here, sorry about this, is that once you hit a side effect or something, you just want to stop it, but you know what, I've... I've kind of talked to my doctors and I'm not going to stop it, I'm going to just carry on. There's nothing else I can take and I just need to be able to just get this under control. I may go for an operation. The problem is also if when you have scarring, scar tissue in your gut, you can't heal it. So I think I may go for an operation, cut that out, unfortunately. I said it now, it's easy to say now, but when I get up, come up to it, it's going to be so bad in the few weeks around and after the operation, but I think it's the best way get rid of the get rid of that and stay on strong medication then those those the scar tissue where it's narrowed hopefully get <laughs> won't exist anymore we no pain and then I'll be able to be the same like him hopefully you know and also there was another lady she I think mid mid twenties late twenties or so had a child and she said if it wasn't for the infliximab She'd have had to have a hysterectomy, but she said she was seriously considering it before she before she found Infliximab to work for her. So it's just that just puts you into context. These medications, oh, you can say all oh, the side effects and everything, how bad they are, or what have you. But I mean, they're saving, they're making the the quality of life they bring to some people is unbelievable. Hysterectomy is basically getting the rid. I wasn't quite sure before getting rid of the uterus, the womb of a woman, so she can't have 